How's it going guys? Jake here for Dude Ranch DIY. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a special video for you. I'm joined by my friend Andre here. If you remember a couple videos back, we dropped a big sugar maple log using the dump trailer and the log arch here at the sawmill. And uh, I said that we might get a little uh, update on it or some pictures, but I'm doing you one even better. We're gonna have a full video of processing this log down into some slabs. Isn't that right, Andre? Yeah, welcome to uh, our site here, uh, where we are fortunate to have uh, over, uh, I guess, 25 different species of uh, hardwood. And, and welcome, Jake. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, no, look forward to uh, cutting her up. Yeah, so Andre here has a, a sawmill and a full lumber and furniture business. Um, custom slabs, all sorts of exotic hardwoods. Um, so we're gonna see the sugar maple log here get all cut up and uh, processed down from the raw form that I brought it in down to uh, some, some art, I'd like to call it. So uh, stay tuned and we're gonna get right to it. So as Jake mentioned, we took this tree in uh, for a client looking to get uh, some beams out of it to go ahead and uh, I think it's a living room project, not quite sure. But the idea is that uh, the main meat of the tree uh, sits across this crotch right here where the, the sort of main uh, wood value divided in, in its growth. So we'll want to go ahead and try and maximize. Think of this box being our, our main value and then trimming everything off of that um, you know to go ahead and, and, and capture which will mean that we'll end up making our first cut across the top right here somewhere and our second cut across the bottom right here probably our third cut somewhere right about in here so that would be basically squaring the log up exactly okay cool so this is the log guys if you remember it's uh, got quite a few knots in it i think it's gonna have some awesome uh, characteristics or character just from all the grain pattern going in all different directions. So we are going to fire up the bobcat and the chainsaw. We're gonna trim it up a little bit and get it on the mill. So the idea is that is gonna be where um, the second place the log sits on the track. Gotcha, so that flat spot will basically give it a, a spot to lay. Exactly. On the track right here. Kiko. Sometimes it's easier to take. <laughs> Is that a, a nail? That a nail right out of oh, the Oh man, wow. First cut. <laughs> so uh, normally I like to go ahead and cut into the even or most even uh, side of the log because that allows the blade to enter most level. So there isn't any sort of inequality that then sort of gyrates throughout the saw as it goes on its cut because things moving at whatever it is, 90 or 110 miles an hour. And uh, if it picks up any sort of uh, um, momentum uh, that you know, deviates from, from the straight cut, it'll, it'll actually increase uh, sort of over time. And it can cause fluctuations in each cut. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so we got this flushed up somewhat and uh, just the remaining piece there is the nail. Um, but That's why they call it hard maple. That's why they call it hard maple. All right, um, cool, so.
So we've got the log on the track here. As you can see, now these knots uh, are horizontal to the track and we're ready to make the first cut here to start squaring it up. So we ran into a minor issue here. Uh, there was actually a pebble on the track that the sawmill rides on and that caused uh, the sawmill to almost derail here. Um, so we pulled the log off and finished the last little like foot section of the cut with the echo chainsaw over there. And Andre just took the log off, flipped it over as you can see and now he's going to continue to uh, square up this side. So you can see now it's laying pretty flat on the track and he can run down it one more time with the sawmill to get a scab off the top of the log to give himself two flat edges.
right guys so as you can see here this is quite the log now that it's all wet absolutely gorgeous so andre what's the plan here moving forward uh yeah so we called a client and uh just given the fact that there is a lot of character um going on i uh, i think it might be worth um, transitioning away from the original cut list which was going to be just an eight by eight and a bunch of four by fours and six by sixes and try to get them a couple of slabs for dining room table and benches in addition to getting a couple of eight by eights probably one full eight by eight and then maybe more of a measly eight by eight with some live edge in it yeah i think that's a real smart move just judging on all of the character in this thing i mean this is this is really beautiful. <laughs> Kiko knows. It's your spot, buddy, huh? Earning his kibble. Well, guys, we just got off the phone with the, uh, I guess, owner of, of this log, and he is insistent on getting the 8x8s out of this. So um, Andre is going to, I guess, fire up the mill, and this log is going to be turned into 8x8s. Got the blade free. Call it hard maple for a reason.
what's left of the lock here. This big old scab. We got the two slabs over there on the left. The big 8x8 piece that still needs to be ripped down on the sides. Uh, but it's amazing what these logs can turn into. With, given the right equipment, of course. So we got the piece standing up on edge, ready to rip down. First 8x8, and the second one is right here. So, there we have the final product. Rough sawn 8x8 beams. Alright guys, so while it's still light out, we're going to take a little quick walk around the wood yard here. Obviously, there is a lot of wood. Um, Andre just got done putting on a fresh blade, and he's going to show us some of uh, the, the slabs that he has. So these right here are walnut. They're about uh, uh, 35 inches in diameter and about 12 feet long. Uh, they were milled in about 2019. These are ambrosia maple, cookie cut or disc cut. Um, uh, about uh, 35 inches wide, milled in late 2020. These are some walnut slabs. This is hard maple, the same species we're milling today. Milled in about 2019. This is a piece of sequoia right here that came from the Rockefeller State in Sleepy Hollow. Um, this is a piece of mulberry right here which is very wow. odd wood yeah you find every day uh more black walnut uh this here is white oak uh these three slabs are white oak sorry these five slabs are white oak right here this is beech right here and here this right here is uh more hard maple uh, in here we have sycamore right here beech on the bottom what are these big ones over here uh, these are all mantles. Uh, that's mantles. pine right there. So uh, heart pine. So we do a lot of 
um, sort of like aged mantles. So we let them, you know, sort of sit out here for a while. And then um, once they are sort of old looking, we mill them up and uh, you know, kiln dry them and epoxy them and sand them and then um, custom fit them onto people's homes. Ready for their living room. Ready for their living room, living room exactly. So uh, uh, here we've got some cherry slabs up top here. The red color you see on the end grain. This is some elm right in here, along with some beech, some more beech down in the bottom. Uh, all of these mantles are various, you know, red oak, chestnut. Um, you know, you've got elm, you've got, um, you know, yeah, it's a sort of cornucopia. We've got some more slabs over here as well. This is actually from a a sycamore that Jake brought a uh, number of months back that uh, he's entitled to some slabs to from. Um, here we have um, some uh, burl maple in here, some burl black oak in here. Um, behind this is another piece of hard maple. And then in behind there are some Norway maple. And then you have uh, burl maple in back and you can see on along that bark line all in there all that burl coming out of that, that tree in there. Oh yeah, you really can. So that's all the burl. Um, yeah, I mean we've got these are some five foot wide by uh, 14 foot long um, uh, burl ambrosia silver maple slabs that are absolutely massive. Originally each one weighed nearly 800 pounds. Now that they're drying, they're probably close to 500 pounds. Uh, wow, those are really wide. <laughs> yeah, they're big slabs. Um, these are some huge white oaks. So these are 18 feet long uh, and about 45 inches wide. Uh, right here, black walnut, again, about 40 inches wide and 18 feet long. Um, and then over by Kiko, you've got some uh, more sequoia and some massive red oak slabs at about 17 and a half by 45 inches. And each one of those uh, originally was weighing in just uh, under 900 pounds. Now wow. It's right out. Quite the inventory here. We've come a long way in the last uh, three, four years. Absolutely. Now, tell us a little bit about you do all the finishing and and stuff as well, right? From everything, uh, cast or uh, steel work for bases for yeah. tables and. Yeah, so we have a, a number of uh, steel uh, base suppliers. In addition to you know, getting on the lathe and building, you know, wooden uh, legs, uh, we also order from a few suppliers. Uh, J.P. Shepard is uh, a friend who's built uh, some custom. Um, uh, both forge hand hand uh, built, um, you know, iron, um, you know, sort of uh, pounded into perfection. He's uh, <laughs> he's very good at what he does. Jackson Powers um, Iron Work. I think very that's, cool. That's what his, uh, his hashtag is, but uh, yeah. So we build all that furniture in Newport, Rhode Island, and uh, it's all sort of a, a design concept in, in the garage. And uh, you know, it all starts here once we've milled it and dried it. And we bring it up to Newport and we start fabricating it, working on it. And if anybody was interested in, you know, one of your creations, where could they go to find out more information or potentially get in contact with you? Yeah, so northeasthardwood.com or, or the uh, hash or Instagram handle uh, at northeasthardwood. Um, you know, both uh, are you know, viable ways of contacting me and uh, uh, we can either put you in touch with... Uh, uh, somebody to you know, work with you on designing a piece or if you have something you know in mind that you want to build um, you know it starts with you know understanding what you know, type of wood you want to work with and then finding that size slab you know and then the reconfiguration on on the build and then you know finding a, a base or, um, or some table legs and, and then selecting a finish very we cool ship uh, you know to you know, anywhere in North America and um, yeah, I mean, uh, all of our product here um, is carbon capture. So for each board foot of hardwood that we mill, that's 4.7 pounds of CO2 equivalent that is 
captured um, basically out of the sky. So um, at this point, uh, our company, Northeast Hardwood, has um, captured about 189 transatlantic flights worth of carbon. That's pretty cool. Not yeah. something you hear every day. No, it's uh, <laughs> not, not, not what everybody's doing with, uh, with their spare time. Right. Well, I'll be sure to put a link to your website and if I can figure out the Instagram uh, down in the, the description below. Um, so definitely go and check out all of the, uh, you know, the gallery on Andre's website and some of the finished creations. But uh, I hope this was informative and I hope you guys enjoyed um, seeing this video here because this is definitely not something that I do every day. And uh, to anybody that's been watching the channel a long time knows that, uh, you know, that this is pretty cool and a uh, pretty unique experience. So thanks for having us here. Thanks for coming by. Well, all right, guys, that's about going to wrap up this video here. Uh, like I said before, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the whole process uh, from me picking up the log with the log arch and the dump trailer to coming over to Northeast Hardwoods wood yard over here and sawmill and milling it up into slabs and eight by eight beams. It was a really cool experience. I appreciate it. Glad to have you. And uh, if anybody is interested in any sort of custom milling or furniture, uh, or what live edge live edge slabs as well yeah. yeah if you want to do it yourself with uh you know slab come on by we'll, we'll set you up yeah so uh now you got a guy that can pick up the log a guy that can mill the log and uh you know the rest is up to your own imagination so as always guys um like the video give us a big thumbs up if you haven't done so already click that subscribe button down below. Um, any questions, comments, or feedback, I will try and do my best to answer them. Uh, might have to refer to you, Andre, for uh, some of the more technical questions. But uh, I'm Jake, this is Andre, this is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here next time.